right, so numbers three and four, I believe this was page two in your link, but scroll through the link and um, we're doing three and four. Before we start, I want to go over the equilibrium constant expression. We call it K uh, sub EQ just to specify it's for general equilibrium. We have a couple other equilibrium constants that we'll talk about throughout the semester. Um, so this is our the first one we're start talking about. And it's the concentration of products divided by the concentration of reactants. So the reason I put that in brackets is because brackets mean concentration. Concentration is moles per liter. Uh, you can also use this same formula if you have pressure, like ATM, pressure, atmospheres. Um, the I think there's another problem in your worksheets that have you calculating it in atmospheres, so the same rules apply. Uh, we're going to first start with number three, which is more of like a general it's just got the A, B, C, D instead of actual uh, molecules. We'll move on to four next, which gives you the actual molecules. Um, so if I was going to set up a general equilibrium expression for this reaction here, so KEQ, the equilibrium constant, would equal the concentration of the products. So in this case, that's the concentration of C times the concentration of D over the concentration of the reactants. So here's two things to remember when you're writing the expression. First of all, the expression is for gas only. So the anything that's solid, liquid, or aqueous will not be included in our equilibrium expression, only gas. That means we won't be including B because B is solid. So we are going to include A, the concentration of A. And because the A has a coefficient of 2, we're actually going to square the concentration of A. Uh, C and D didn't have coefficients, it was just one, so that's technically like putting each of those to the power of one, uh, which is then itself. Um, so that is our general equilibrium expression for the reaction shown in number three. So now we're going to go ahead and use the data. It says uh, calculate the equilibrium constant for the following reaction, and then it says the equilibrium concentration of of the components are, and it gave us a list which is nice and neat. You can see down below. They don't really list it like that usually. This is just sort of like a nice neat one for practice. So we would do KEQ equals the concentration of C, so that's the 4.11 times 10 to the negative 4, times the concentration of D, so that's 8.22 times 10 to the negative 4, over the concentration of A, A is 0. 0, 9, 2, 2, and then we're going to square that one. So I'm going to put all that into my calculator and get an answer for KEQ. And I get 3.97 times 10 to the negative 5. Um, you are actually calculating the constant. The constant doesn't have units just the um, concentrations do. So if you were calculating a concentration, so A, B, C, or D, then your units would be the mol molarity, which is capital M. You could write moles per liter. Uh, either of those are acceptable. Even putting it in the brackets are acceptable because those brackets mean concentration. Um, KEQ doesn't have a unit. So that would be your final answer for number three. Okay, moving on to number four. Number four says the equilibrium constant for the following reaction for the decomposition of phosgene at 25 degrees celsius is 4.282 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay so before I start like plugging in information I'm just going to write my equilibrium expression. So remember it's products over reactants and then only the gases apply, and then you put it to the power of whatever the coefficient is. So I'm going to have my products written first. So I have the concentration of carbon monoxide, since that's a gas. I have a concentration of chlorine gas. And then over my concentration of COCl2, all of those have a coefficient of 1. Um, I'm just going to, yeah, double check. You can double check. There's one carbon, one carbon, one oxygen, one oxygen, two chlorine, two chlorine. So it's balanced. Um, and it's balanced with all coefficients of 1, so there aren't actually powers in this one. So A, it gave, and it gave me the, here, it gave me KEQ. Um, so A says, what is the concentration of COCl2? 
when the concentrations of both CO and Cl are, and then it tells me. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I like to rearrange my equation sort of before I plug the numbers in. So I need to, let me see, I'll go ahead and do this just the long way so that everybody can see what kind of math I'm doing. Um, if you can do this in your head, obviously you don't have to write all this out. Um, but if I wanted to move the COCl2 to the other side, I'd have to multiply it by both sides. We do need it in the numerator. Um, and since it's in the denominator, that doesn't work. So I'm going to cancel it on that side. That gives me the concentration of COCl2 times KEQ equals concentration of carbon monoxide and the concentration of chlorine gas. Okay, so now to isolate what I need, I'm going to divide my KEQ by both sides. So my formula that I'm going to work with here is the concentration of COCl2 equals the concentration of carbon monoxide times the concentration of chlorine gas over my KEQ. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in here down below. So again, COCl2 is equal to concentration of carbon monoxide, which was 5.9 times 10 to the negative three. And then it said that that was the concentration for both of them. I'm gonna write it out because I think that might be your instinct. But if you wanted to just write it once and write it squared, that's the same thing. And then I'm gonna divide it by the KEQ. I have to scroll up real quick to see what the KEQ was. It was 4.282 times 10 to the negative two. So 4.282 times 10 to the negative two. So again, that value came from right here. It gave, it gave me that value in the question. All of these values were given in the question. I did not have to use a periodic table or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and calculate that answer. And in my calculator, I get 8.13 um, times 10 to the negative four. And because I'm calculating a concentration, I have a unit there and a chemical formula. So that is my final answer for A, calculating the concentration of COCl2. Um, this was A, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do B so that you have one more example on here. So I'm just gonna come up and read it. So B says, so we're looking right here. It says when the equilibrium concentration, so they're giving us the concentration now of the COCl2 and they're asking us for the concentration of the other. They're telling us this is important here. Assume that the concentrations are equal. That's important because in a single equation, you can't have multiple variables unless you have multiple equations. So because we don't have multiple equations here, uh, we need a single variable. By allowing them to be the same concentration, we can then make them the same variable. Similar to where I said right here that you could have done uh, 5.9 times 10 to the negative 3 squared since they were the same. We're going to use that concept um, down below. So I'm going to, again, rearrange this first equation that we started with. I'm going to rearrange that um, to get what I'm going to use. So again, I'm going to rearrange before I plug things in. I need to get these two here by themselves. So in order to do that, I'm just going to write it out down here. Times the concentration, and then we have divided by this constant. Okay, so in order to get them by themselves, we need to uh, multiply the concentration of COCl2 on both sides. So that gives us the concentration of carbon monoxide and the concentration of chlorine. Again, because they made that statement that those are equal, we're going to give those the same variable. So I'm actually going to use a variable here, and I'm going to say x squared equals the concentration of COCl2 times the equilibrium constant. So they gave me the concentration of COCl2. It was right here. So 0 0.00370. So that's 0 0.00370 times the equilibrium constant, which they had given me before. That was the 4 point, whoopsie, 4.282 times 10 to the negative two. 
So I'm going to multiply those together to get x squared. And I get 1.584 uh, times 10 to the negative 4. Then, in order to get x by itself, in order to figure out each of those concentrations individually, I need to take the square root. Uh, so when I put that in my calculator, I get uh, 1.26 times 10 to the negative 2, and that is my concentration of both. That's my concentration of carbon monoxide. It is also my concentration of chlorine, um, since x represented both of those. Uh, did it ask for both or did it ask for just, I think it asked for both, right? Um, yeah, what are the concentrations of carbon monoxide and chlorine gas? So those are both of my answers since they're both equal. All right, there you go. Um, please continue on, check your answers as you do your work. Let me know if you have any questions.